Hello everyone, my name is Mariah and I'm back with another video on um, a Learn With Me series. Um, I've always had this wormwood and I'll show you in a second. Um, I've always had this wormwood um, Artemisia absinthium I believe and I last year I did a vinegar with it because it smells so good but I also want to learn a little bit more about the plant because I know it can be as a digestive bitter but I would like to um, look at my books and see what they say so I'm gonna bring you along in that journey so inside I have a wormwood vinegar and, and it's just in a five gallon bucket and I use that mainly for cleaning and um, sometimes I put it in my laundry as like a vinegar but also it just smells good so I I use it for that too so as you can see I have this five gallon bucket and um, when wormwood was about to bloom or flower um, or was flowering I just went and harvested all the leaves that I could and all the flowers that I could and I put it in this bucket and it came up to about here I believe and so I just put all the flowers I had and leaves I had in here and then filled it with distilled white vinegar so I am back in my garden corner I want to learn a little bit more about her and see what's in my books and bear with me this might be a really long video um, I'll be reading a lot of uh, excerpts from the books that I chose and also trying to find out some more information on things that I read so grab a tea grab some tea or coffee and um, sit down with me and learn with me if you'd like and I might I might be uh, adjusting my camera a lot in this video uh, just because it's hard to show excerpts in the books that I'm trying to so trying to read I found this book that I had in my library called the herbal herbal antibiotics natural alternatives for treating drug resistant bacteria and I will put it put a link to it in the description below but um, I've always, well, I think I just got this book. I don't remember when, but I haven't read through it. And that's mainly the reason why I'm trying to start this Learn With Me series. So then I can actually look through my books and um, find info that I've been wanting to know instead of just um, going online and looking online. Because I have these books here and I want to know what's in them. And I also want to be well versed in the books that were published with her herbalism info in them so I thought this would be a good idea to just film myself doing it so I'm holding myself accountable and also while learning so I for Wormwood they have an excerpt in this for Artemisia but it's not just for Artemisia absinthium they mention Artemisia annua and it says that it contains the most Arte artemisinin, a potent antiparasitic. Um, but there's 400 Artemisia, Artemisia in the genius. genius. Um, so Artemisia annua, I guess it's sweet annie or sweet wormwood. Which I'm not familiar with. Artemisinin is famous for its effectiveness in treating malaria. Many other Artemisia, Artemisias contain artemisinin. Contrary to earlier reports saying they did not. And I will discuss some of them in this section. All the plants in this genus in the genus do have some antibacterial and antimicrobial actions however those constituents are not nearly as system systemic as those in the other plants in this chapter artemisia annua artemisinin and its related constituents are best thought of as a systemic 
<laughs> anti hemato hematoparasiticals anti hematoparasiticals hematoparasiticals that is specific for killing blood parasites rather than systemic antibacterials. Nevertheless, for treating diseases and their range of action, they are great. Parts used, the aerial parts, including the flowers, which in my vinegar I used the flowers and the leaves, which have the highest artemisinin content. So I wonder with my vinegar, am I... Am I helping to kill off, like, parasitics? Like, is, is that... I wonder... Hmm. Whole herb has a much broader range of actions than the isolated constituent artemisinin. Because the studies are few and plant preparation differs from study to study, the outcomes in the antibacterial studies of the Artemisias are contradictory. They do find a range of act antibacterial activity across the Artemisias bearing out traditional uses of the genus, but the studies tend to vary on which bacteria the species are active against. Artemisinin and some of the other antiparasitics in Artemisia are strongly systemic but they have limited antibacterial activity. They are primarily anti-parasitics for the blood and liver, okay, and anti-tumor agents. So the anti-parasitic functions probably occur when, when you take it internally. Um, so I don't think it's going to be killing any parasites that are aerobic or that are in that are in the air or on surfaces parasites on surfaces hmm. but it is semi antimicrobial and antibacterial so well, at least artemisia annua is and i'm going over this part because i just wanted to see what they said about artemisia annua they do have a small um, section on Artemisia absinthium. Which I will get to in a second. Hmm. The activities of the essential oils are more broadly antibacterial, okay, but they are primarily confined to the GI tract when the plant is taken internally, okay. This makes them useful for GI tract infections or for use directly on the skin, but useless as systemic antibacterials. The traditional use of Artemisia annua, which gives a very good indication of its range of medicinal activity, has been primarily for reducing fever. The plant simulates sweating for topical use. The It's useful for infected wounds and skin infections, for GI tract problems and infections, for female reproductive problems, primarily as an amenagogue, and I believe it. Let's test my knowledge before I look it up. And menagogues, they are um, herbs that that promote bleeding, I think. Let's go look. Let's see if I was right. This is weird. They have a bibliography. Recommend reading, endnotes, epilogue, herbal formulary. Um, uh, let's see. Where did I see? Oh, I saw it in my other book. I'll be right back. So, I believe 
I saw definitions and maybe this um, the herbal medicine makers handbook and this is I think I just got this too there's some books that I have in storage right now um, in our shed so I the on, only books that I have in the house right now are these newer books here we go 40 herbal actions to know so menagog increases menstrual flow they said it in way less words than what I um, said but I said promote bleeding I didn't say promote menstrual bleeding or like um, feminine bleeding so increases menstrual flow um, that's a men a menagogue. And this, this is actually a good book to, to go look at herbal terms here. And then I'm going to take it down so you can see this. So see here, menagogue increases menstrual flow. And then also in this book, it's really cool how they have it set up because... They not only just have this expert excerpt here on verbal actions, they have um, I'll go here, then. just like a few herbs that are easy have um, that are easy to access. This book is also really good for referencing on how to make tinctures and infusions and solvents jellos lotions ointments so anything you're trying to do they have like a general recipe on and that's something that i need to look at in this book like i said this is a newer book for me so i have not looked at it and most of the books that i did do have for medicine making i didn't really or like just medicine medicinal uh, information I haven't really looked at too much on them, so. Okay, so back to Artemisia. So, where was I? essential oils most of the antibacterial studies have been on the essential oils of various species but again these oils do not disseminate widely in the bloodstream which means they will be useful only for respiratory infections when used as a steam internally in the gi tract when prepared as a cold infusion or typically when used as a poultice or cold infusion wash Nevertheless, when used in these ways, artemisia are very good medicines for resistant organisms other than blood parasites. A study of artemisia nilagirica leaf extracts found the plant active against a range of both gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. number of studies have found most artemisias inactive against E. coli. Huh. Clebacella, Klebacella, Klebacella, Pseudomonas, and staff, but others such as one looking for at the activity of Artemisia anomala against Bacillus, Bacillus E. coli, Protea, like the the very common viruses and and bacteria that people want to clean, get rid of in their house, have found the plant to be active. Huh. So, Artemisia anomala is good, um, has activity against E. coli, Salmonella, and Staphylococcus aureus. In that example, a menthanol extract was used. Given the solubility dynamics of Artemisia constituents, including artemisinin, it seems likely that the variability in the studies is coming from solubility differentials. Hexane, for example, is a much better solvent for Artemisia constituents than anything else 
and artemisia art or an artemisinin is much more highly solub, soluble in fat whole milk than water interesting mm, all right and then they go into preparation and dose which i'm not really going to try and get into it they go into very specific details on preparation and dosage um, they have a fresh herb infusion for malaria, malaria, um, fresh herb juice for malaria. Huh? So, okay. On this one, they've got properties of artemisia. Actions, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory anti-malarial, anti-parasitical, or anti-parasitic, anti-tumor, antiviral, calcium antagonist. I'll have to look that up, but I, my guess is that um, it's a rival <laughs> with calcium. So is it going to um, keep one from uh, digesting or, um, what is it called? I'll come back to that thought, but it's an immunomodulant, a plasmodicide, and a schizo schizonticide. Schizonticide. I've never heard that word before. So the calcium antagonist. So um, you can't. Oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get this word. I'm really bad with words. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I need to learn and hold and hold myself accountable. I'm really bad with words. Um, not digest, but. Yeah. I will remember one day. Decoctions of the herb are active against bacillus and a whole bunch of other viruses. <laughs> Different extract was found to be active against mycobacterium. Avium. The type not stated. So I wonder what this different extract is. The essential oil has been found active against candida, enterococcus, E. coli, staphylococcus, but not pseudomonas. Okay, other actions. Let's see if they mention our Artemisia absinthium, which we are trying to learn more about. Ooh, okay, here we go. A absinthium, so that's short. Artemisia, they're just they're just doing a um, abbreviation. So A. absinthium and others. Uh, what else is this? And others. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I totally skipped over it. So um, the oil of Artemisia cerniaviana has been found active against bacillus, bacillus, so two bac bacillus. Candida, Enterobacter, and E. coli, and Klebs Klebsiella, and Staphylococcal, Sa Staphylococcus. The same antibacterial activity has been found in other Artemisias, and they list Artemisia absinthium first. Okay. The Artemisias in general are considered to be active against intestinal parasites, but again, little active study has occurred. Artemisia absinthium is often considered the most potent against intestinal parasites in historical practice. Oh, that's pretty cool. Leaf extracts are active against Staphylococcus parasites, nematodes that infect the intestinal tracts of mice. Weird. The plant is also active against multi-drug resistant malaria parasites in vivo. I'll be right back. I had to get my cat from downstairs. 
we don't have a cat door, so I have to open up the door for him. Here he is, little buddy. You know, buddy. You know, buddy. Okay, so I have my tea. I just made some holy Tulsi or Tulsi or holy basil. I always combine words, but holy basil Tulsi and it's a bagged tea. I did not, I did not brew or, um, you know, uh, prepare the herbs and, and do it myself this time. I will do that a lot with burdock root. And, um, if I ever do go out to, Harvest dandelion root. I'll do roasted dandelion root, and that is delicious to me. All right, back to it. So, mm, okay, so we learned that A. absinthium is often considered the most potent against intestinal parasites in horse historical practice. Okay. Various artemisias have been found active against plant, plant pathogens, which is why artemisias are used to protect crops in some locations and various fungi. Oh, so that was my thinking. So when I first um, received wormwood, I, so I had no idea about, you know, its effects or like, you know, that it has a lot of um, different benefits in the medicinal realm. Um, so I got it for the purpose of keeping my, um, vegetables protected from deer. Um, and it seemed to work pretty well. I just had four plants, I believe maybe, yeah, no four. And then I just bordered my, my, uh, bed with wormwood in the ground and they got, they got really big, but they were really pretty and they smell super good. So I wanted to know if I could use it medicinally, and it's it's proving to be true. So, um, a lot of what I've gathered so far that you can it's a great anti um, anti parasitical, um, um, and it's great to use internally. Um, cold infusions are the way to go, so that you can keep the oils good the natural oils in the plant good and um it's active against a bunch of different bacterias that i can only really recognize like two or three of them i know e coli bacillus and um candida and then this and staph i guess so four but it's still a lot more there's still a lot more bacteria that it is active against. So that's pretty cool to find out. Used to treat any parasitic infection in the blood and liver. Very active in the blood and liver as well. Or for systemic cancers. Now, when books mention um, active, like, um, mention herbs that can be used for cancer, you know, every cancer is different, so they're all treated very differently. So take I always take um, when books say that with a grain of salt because cancer is so complex and it's not something to just mess with, you know. These are real strengths of the plant if it is being used as a systemic. There is nothing else comparable in potency for these uses. The plant, if properly prepared, is also active against microbial and parasitic infections, especially in the GI tract. Very good for the GI tract. They've said that a couple of times now, so it must be true. Um, so they have a dried herb infusion, infusion in milk. Hmm. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Is very um, fat soluble. So milk. Things that have a lot of milk in them, milk, whole milk. I don't know what other drinks would have a lot of fat in them. Just using oil 
you know, making a wormwood oil would be really good. Oh, that gives me an idea to do a wormwood oil for as like a poly a wood polish. That would be pretty cool. Um, even or a wormwood oil to put on yourself, you know, as a salve or like just as an oil to put on you. Um, tincture for malaria. Tincture with CD Cida and cryptolepsis. Hi, buddy. Finding Artemisia. The herb grows pretty much everywhere as it's planted. Seeds are widely available. Yeah. Hi, Vinci. He's playing with me. Um, let's see what else they say. They, so there are side effects and contraindications, of course. About 25% of people using Artemisia annua as an anti-malarial report a mild nausea, which does not progress to vomiting. It may also cause occasional dizziness, tinnitus, pruritus, which I'm not familiar with, and mild abdominal pain so it can cause gastrointestinal upset loss of appetite nausea cramping diarrhea vomiting about four percent of people who take it experience these symptoms usually in a more severe form than that experience from ingesting the herbal infusion very high doses have caused liver inflammation which corrects upon stopping the supplement Artemisinin has a slightly chronotopic effect on the heart. It causes mild hypotension. This has not been apparently a problem in any uses. Users, both the herb and the constituents should be used with caution in pregnancy, especially in the first trimester. In vivo studies have found a number of adverse effects in rats and mice if the herb is used in the first trimester. However, one clinical trial with 16 patients in the first trimester of pregnancy taking the herb found the miscarriage rate to be the same as that for the general population. Herb drug interactions. Artemisia annua, like many antimicrobial plants, contains synergists that make its compounds more active against microbial organisms. In this instance, chrysostenol and chrysoplanitin, two flavonols in the plant have been found to potentiate the activity of berberine and nor flox saxon against resistant staph. Artemisinin does, does induce certain liver enzymes and may interact with drugs such as omeprazole. Okay, they go into habitat and appearance. Cultivation and collection as for Artemisia annua. Um, plant chemistry. Lyme disease caution. Wow. I have heard from several people with Lyme disease that they have been taking artemisinin for one to two years at relatively high doses. This is highly contraindicated and should not be done under any circumstances. I repeat, this is a really bad idea. Artemisinin is extremely safe when used appropriately. That is in doses around 1,200 milligrams daily for seven days. So it, it's a short dose. It's a short dose herb. It's a short, do short dose plant. And again, like if it's an infection in the GI tract, you're treating the infection. You're not, it's not necessarily preventing you getting this infection. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a mainly treat and beat, not treat and repeat. <laughs> um, traditional uses, systemic constituents of the plant primarily act in two ways. 
one as highly potent antiparasitics for blood and liver parasites, the two as anti-tumor agents. These same constituents have two other actions that are useful. One, they stimulate sweating and thus help reduce fever. And two, they are amenagogues, which we covered before. It increases menstrual flow. The amenagog action is why the plant is generally not recommended in the first trimester of pregnancy. Yes, that makes sense. Cavite, Artemisia annua, has much less amenagog activity than some of the other Artemisias. The simulatory activity has been found to be only minimal. Hmm. Although other artemisias have been used effectively to treat malaria and other blood parasites, the most potent species for this at this time is Artemisia annua. The plant has been used in Chinese medicine for over 2,000 years, but its current state status as an anti-malarial emerged from its use by the North Vietnamese during the Vietnam War. Malarial infections were exceptionally high among the North Vietnamese troops. Appeals to the Chinese leader Mao for help resulted in the discovery of Artemisia annua for use as an anti-malarial Chinese researchers had developed, discovered that in one region of China, the people had little incidence of malaria infection. Looking closer, they discovered that the local people took the herb at the first sign of symptoms. In 1972, Chinese researchers isolated artemisinin. Ayurveda. This plant is unknown in India, though a number of other Artemisias are used. Artemisia absinthium is used for intermittent feeders for stomach complaints as a bitter and digestive. I did know that. That's one thing that I found online, but I wanted to read it in a book. <laughs> as a vermifuge for intestinal worms. Oh, that's another term that we should highlight as a vermifuge for intestinal worms. So pretty much um, it expels, it expels, expelling um, worms from your intestines um, or expelling things, you know, from, from your digestive tract is my thought. But I will highlight that. And for nervous system complaints from hysteria to depression. One, ooh, okay, so Artemisia maritima, worm seed, is specific for intestinal worms. Most of the other Artemisias are used similarly. Artemisinin and other Artemisias. Number of Artemisias do contain Artemisinin. 18 identified so far. So only 18 out of the 400 are identified so far as having artemisinin. None to the degree of Artemisia annua, though close. Some are close. The flowers of Artemisia bushriensis have nearly as much artemisinin as A. annua, about 80%, than the leaves of A. Dracun Dracunculus, Dracunculus, about 60% than the flowers of a number of species in descending order. So A. absinthium is last, about 30% of the amount of artemisinin in Artemisia annua. Huh. Um... Again, skip the roots and stems. Okay, so in my vinegar, which is made purely for smell, the vinegar is really doing the cleaning there. Um, uh, I used the stems, not the roots, but it was just, I, well, I don't have that many stems. I, when I was ripping up a part, I just took the stems and then ripped off the, all of the leaves that I could and all of the, like, I just kind of went in like like one of those herb de um 
but with my hands um and got all the leaves and the flowers off so but some of the flowers probably have a little bit of stem on them but again mainly for cleaning and smell any other cool stuff about artemisia For many years, A. annua was unknown, although many other artemisias have, been long, have long been used. Artemisia absinthium was a primary herb among the eclectics in the late 19th century in the United States. What does that mean? What is eclectics? What is, who, are de who are defined as eclectics in the late 19th century? <laughs> we'll have to look that up. The herb was used for intermittent flavors for malaria as a vermifuge in the treatment of intestinal worms for dyspepsia, nervous conditions, diarrhea, and liver complaints for am amenorrhea and leucorrhea for jaundice. Other artemisias were used similarly for jaundice. Other artemisias were used similarly. The indigenous peoples throughout the United States used the plants similarly good info here the, again this is a new book to me there's a lot of information on very um select amount of herbs like um i'll go back to the and they oh and then they have a section for the whole herb versus artemisinin itself section clinical trials with capsules with whole herb infusions let's read that that's actually some good information there okay clinical trial with capsules clinical trial of 165 people infected with plasmodium vivax 53 were given capsules of a annual that also contained oil for three days another 50 received the herb capsules with oil for six days 41 received with capsules without the oil 21 received chloroquine so i'm 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 guessing chloro chloroquine is like a an actual medicine that they use to treat plasmodium is my thought uh, dosage was 36.8 grams on the first day, 18.4 on the subsequent days. Parasite clearance and fever reduction were faster with the capsules than with chloroquine. There were a 30, there was a 30 day follow up with blood checks every 10 days. About one third of those who took the COEA herb capsules for only three days or who took the non oil capsules experienced recrudescence. Those who took COEA for six days experienced about 8% recrudescence. There was no recrudescence in the chloroquine group. Okay, so it's about, I would say, um, dissecting that, I would say that um, the capsules of A. annua were 8% less effective on um, the comeback of plasmodium than the actual chlor chlorocrine so that's pr in my book that's pretty close and that's that's pretty awesome to hear that herbalism can can do these things clinical trial with infusion an aqueous infusion for five days in a small trial of five people found a hundred percent clearance no follow-up occurred to check for recrudescence clinical trial with infusion and decoction a trial using using infusions 254 people and decoctions 48 people with five grams herb and one liter of hot water infused for 15 minutes or boiled for five minutes found both forms ineffective dose was 250 milliliters about eight ounces four times daily for seven days in the infusion group and four days in the d Decoction group. So seven days for infusion, four days in decoction. Plants rate was 93% and 
respectively. The, there was a 13% recrudescence rate in the infusion group. Recrudescence in the decoction group was not checked. Early indications are that if the plant is properly prepared and used, it can be as effective as artemisinin or its analog analogs in the treatment of malaria and other blood parasites. It will be especially effective if combined with other plants described in this chapter, especially Ceda and Cryptolepsis. Okay, that's what they say for Artemisia. I skipped over some parts because... Some of it, like preparation or, or dosage, I wasn't really wanting right now. I don't want that information right now. But it's there, and that's awesome that it's there. So if I ever have intestinal worms, I know which book to go to and for dosage. And I also know what herb to go to. Well, one herb to go to. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other different herbs out there to treat intestinal worms or of the GI tract or, you know, uh, parasites in your blood or liver. And yeah, so this book, Herbal Antibiotics, Natural Alternatives for Treating Drug-Resistant Bacteria, second edition by Stephen Harold Booner. Booner? I probably didn't say that right. But, like I said, I will link this in the description below. And, yeah, so they have sections on herbal antibiotics for syst as systemics, as localized non-systemics, as synergists, first line of defense, strengthening the immune system, a whole handbook of herbal medicine making and herbal formulary. And I, when I was looking for a glossary of terms, I did see their herbal form formulary. It's basically just short sections on um, how to use an herb. So, like, for instance, they have Sambucus, which is elder, or elderberry, or elderflower. They just say tincture, fresh flower, one to two ratio, dosage, 30 to 90 drops up to three times daily. Tincture, fresh leaf, one to two ratio, dosage, 10 drops, not more than once per hour. Good nerve vine. Tincture, dried berry, so on and so on and so on. So, and they do, they have a lot of herbs in that. Um, juniper, St. John's wort, Hypericum perforatum. Melissa Fishnalis, which is lemon balm. They've got, yeah, that's really awesome. So, out of that expert excerpt, I would definitely recommend this book for your um, herbalist library. And I'm glad I have it in mind. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.